Hello and thank you for taking the time today to watch this video. A few things that you'll need in order to perform the tasks carried out in this video will be a mini USB style cable, potentially download a USB driver, terminal emulation software to view that connection. Make sure that you contact your IT department for any software or driver installations to make sure that everything is done proper to your company's policy. This video is specific to the RLE Wing Manager V2. Looking at a comparison of the two generations, the picture on the bottom is the original Wing Manager, or our V1, uh, to where you can see above the RLE logo, there is an RS-232 DB9 shell present. On the picture above is the new console connection using the mini USB. If this is the first time you're gonna be establishing a connection, uh, via the USB cable. A uh, quick test to go through as long as you have permission to access it is opening your device manager and then plugging in the USB cable and confirming everything's communicating properly. So in order to do that, I'm on a Windows 10 PC. So I'll, in the search window, I'm gonna type in device, then start doing an M for manager. And we see that device manager pulls up. I wanna click on the open, so left click. I'm just going to expand this window just a tiny bit. So then next what we do is I'm going to just collapse the network adapters and then we see ports, COM, and LPT. We want to expand this one because this will help us identify if we have the required drivers to make everything talk properly. So with the mini USB plugged into the wing manager and the wing manager being powered up, I'm going to take the other end of the USB cable and plug it into my PC. Generally only takes a couple seconds for it to identify, get a little chime, pops up, kind of resolves itself a couple times. So here we can see USB serial port and it's identifying this port as COM8. It's important depending on the hardware that you're working with that you know what that COM port will be identified as, um, as it'll help you doing your software setup. So I'm going to go through and just show a couple examples on this. I'll also provide a couple screenshots at the end of the video. Um, but most important, this device is working properly. That's definitely what you want to see. We can see as far as the manufacturer, FTDI. Um, if there was an issue with this, as soon as we plug this in, we would see a cautionary triangle to the next to the little adapter setting, or this would tell us that it's not working properly. Other driver information when trying to search for this, if required, um, FTDI and its driver version 2.12.28.0. So I'm gonna click on OK, then I'm gonna click on Close. Again, any troubleshooting or having to go through and get a driver installed, always best going through your IT department to make sure that you get the right stuff loaded into play. All right, so now I'm gonna close out this device manager window, we do not need that anymore. Remembering that COM8 is the COM port on this PC that will be used. So next I have a program from Hillgrave Hyperterm for my terminal emulation. I'm going to double left click, let this open. I'm gonna make a new connection. I'm just gonna call it USB Direct Connect. Now we'll keep that icon in place. So when using this type of program, you have to define what is it using for its communication. So we're gonna come from the drop down, and we're gonna find the proper COM port, which in our case is COM8 with this PC. And this does vary from machine to machine. So we select COM8. Next we have to configure it because it does not use the standard settings. So here we have our bits per second, or better known as our baud rate. Here you want to change this to 115, 200. Select that. Eight data bits is correct. Parity set to none. Stop bit set to one. Flow control set to none. Click on apply. Click on OK. Click on OK. Now that we have all that information in place, the next simple test is, let's see if it actually is talking. So we're just gonna hit the enter key because we can see our cursor flashing in the screen. 
hey, that's a great sign, MGR. So it's letting us know that the manager's there. But if we keep hitting enter, it's just gonna say MGR. So what we need to do in this case is you put a question mark in after the prompt, push enter, and then it's gonna spew out a long menu. And to make demonstration purposes a little bit easier, I'm gonna expand this. So we can see going down through that we can see net config data, we have our IP, net, net mask, default gateway, IPv6. If you wanted to reboot the device, date, time, 45 settings, all sorts of great options going down through depending on what you're doing. Going down to the very last one in case you've really had to go through and set something back to default, there's even a factory reset at the very bottom that you can do through this interface. So in our example in this case is I want to get this brand new Wing Manager V2 on my network. So this is set from the factory with the default IP. Now if I wanted to see what that IP is, all I have to do is type in IP, push enter, and it shows me, hey, IP address 10.0.0.188. That is the manufacturer default IP. Well, that is fine for being the default, but I need it to work on a 192.168 type architecture. So I'm going to update this and put in IP space. And then at this point, you just put in your IP address of your desired host, 192.168.1.226 is what I'm gonna use on this unit. Push enter. It initially writes that into programming, uh, but hasn't taken it fully. We're gonna do a reboot at the very end. So next, based on IP communication, is we need to make sure that the net mask is set correctly. So if I type in N for Nancy, M for Margaret, enter, we see it's 255.255.255.0, which is perfect for what my 192.168 is gonna be communicating as. If I wanted to change it to something different, I would just type in NM space, and then whatever that may be. But in this case, we're not needing to change it. So I'm going to type in DG next for the default gateway, which you can kind of see called up on here. Oops. Highlight that a little bit better. So DG, enter. We can see that's also at a 10 dot structure. So I want to change this to a 192. That way it'll communicate on my network. So I'm gonna go DG space 192.168.1.1. Push enter. All right, now that has been programmed and it's set and we're almost ready to go. So now at this point, what we wanna do is we wanna type reboot and then push the enter key in order to get it to take all these changes that we've just applied. And that way we can get this communicating on our network. So I'm going to type in reboot, push enter. Then all sorts of data starts coming across on the screens. It's checking all of its different things. Checking, checking, running, modem checks, going through. All right, so one of the things to identify, and this works on some of these RLE appliances, that you wanna see cold start completed or sending cold start, that's a good indicator that everything is done. So now at this point, what I can do is I can actually push enter, we see it back up there. If I wanted to double check, I can do the net CFG. And that gives me my network configuration of this appliance. So I can confirm my MAC address. I can see that I'm set to a static IP of 192.168.1.226. I got my proper subnet mask. I got my proper default gateway. Um, and then we have some other data going down through here, depending if you were doing an IPv6 configuration. And this one, we're IPv4, just doing a simple static IP. So now that we have this configured, and then depending on your company's policy, you might have to work with your network group doing a port turn up on a switch. You might have to furnish them this MAC address, potentially, with, along with the IP, letting them know what port you're plugged into in order for doing a proper port turn up. On this one, I have very light security 
built across on this. So I'm going to come to my command prompt. I'm going to open it. And I'm going to make sure that it's talking on the network. So you do ping 192.168.1.226. And I'm testing this from my PC that resides on the network. So it's not a direct connect going to it. So this will test the conductivity that we have communications. And that is the perfect sign you like to see. All right, perfect. And then last thing beyond here would be going in and uh, accessing it through the web interface and starting to do a setup. I'm going to save that for a next video. Well, thank you for your time as far as going over this demonstration as far as for setting up the console port. As I mentioned, depending on the age of your hardware and what you're working with, you may have to download a driver. If you do not have terminal emulation software already set up on your PC or laptop, uh, tablet, you may have to get with your IT department in order to get that downloaded. Uh, terminal emulation, strongly recommended, is a very strong technician-based tool. Uh, it helps you alleviate a lot of headaches and hassle when trying to figure out what an IP is set to and certain diagnostics built in certain appliances. So strongly recommended. Uh, that you go through and you utilize this feature on the hardware. Well, thank you very much for your time and look forward to providing more videos.